how to install Blackmagic Decklink Duo 2 in a Sonnet Echo Express SE Thunderbolt 3 enclosure. If you're watching this video, you either arrived here because you were looking for information on the Decklink Duo 2 from Blackmagic or the Sonnet Echo Express SE1 expansion system, or you may have arrived at this video because you saw the title and was thinking, Zeph, what in the world is this and why would I want it for my live streaming setup? In today's video, let's talk about how you can bring in virtual guest speakers and presenters into your live streams and a better way of doing it. If you're here simply for the install process, just look out for the time code down below this video and I'll tell you where to jump ahead so you can watch the install. So if you're in the live streaming space, you've probably seen that there is always more than one way to do something. So for streamers who are trying to bring in virtual guest speakers to call in remotely. You may have seen options like Restream Studio or StreamYard. These are web-based solutions and work great for many people, but are at the mercy of your internet browser working well and not crashing. It's also at the mercy of the company who created them to keep the web applications running on their own servers. Then you have software options like OBS Ninja, or I think in later iterations it was called VDO Ninja. There's also Ecamm Live, or vMix, these are software-based solutions, which again are dependent on the software not crashing, and it shouldn't, but in my live streams, I do my best to stick to hardware when and where possible. This meant in the past that we had to bring a ton of laptops that would act as Zoom drones. They're essentially dummy computers that sit in on the Zoom call, and we use them to pin and full screen the speakers that we wanna output over HDMI. This also meant that we had to use a lot of inputs and outputs. Each laptop on the Zoom call would output the remote guest speaker over HDMI, audio over three and a half millimeter headphone jack, and then at least one of the computers in on the Zoom call needed to receive a return feed. In my past videos, I've done this with a version one web presenter because we could provide a video return feed and inject our own mix minus audio feed using an XLR cable into the back of the web presenter. Sadly, Blackmagic has changed the web presenter completely in its last iteration, and it is no longer meant to act as a capture device, but rather now as an encoder. As you can tell already, there are a lot of moving parts to get guest speakers into an ATEM, and then of course pile on all the converters to take HDMI feeds and convert them to SDI when you wanted to use an SDI ATEM, and it's just a mess. Now, most of that is completely cleared up with the invention of Zoom ISO. Zoom ISO allows us to take multiple outputs from a Zoom call and send them wherever we want using either NDI or with some additional gear, we can do it over SDI. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I install the Blackmagic Decklink Duo 2 card into the Sonnet Echo Express SE1 Thunderbolt enclosure. The Decklink Duo 2 will allow me to have four SDI outputs over Thunderbolt from just one MacBook Pro, eliminating up to three additional computers when you wanna be able to send up to four virtual Zoom guests into an ATEM as a full screen feed at full 1080 HD. Let's jump over to the install. Okay, so we have our Sonnet box. This is our Sonnet Echo Express SE1, and we've got our Blackmagic Decklink Duo 2. And what I'm gonna do today is get this installed into this enclosure. This is a Thunderbolt 3 enclosure. There's a fan on the bottom for cooling. And then on the back, we've got our Thunderbolt and power port. First things first, we've gotta get this open. So we're gonna start by taking off these four feet that you see on the bottom here, I'm using just a simple Phillips screwdriver. <laughs> All right, all four feet and screws are off and you'll notice that you should probably do this on a table because the enclosure is going to start to come apart. So I'm doing this just for demonstration purposes, uh, but you'll see that you should be able to slide. So here's the front. This enclosure comes right out. So I'm gonna leave it like this on the table so I remember which way is which. There doesn't appear to be a marking to show which is the front or which is the back. And maybe it's the same both ways, but just to be careful, I'm gonna put that on the table with uh, the front facing this way. Um, so inside you will see that you've got 
a chip that's already connected in there that's so that you can get power and thunderbolt and all that figured out but you've got an open slot right here across the top and this is exactly where our decklink duo 2 is going to fit into the slot so let me go ahead and take there's one screw that's actually going to hold it in place you should be able to see it right there so there's one screw that's going to hold the deck link locked in once we have it so let me take that out uh, you'll notice there's probably three screws if you have the same enclosure as i do one is just holding a top piece uh, that is uh, kind of like a protected vent piece on the back here it's holding that one in place one is holding the bottom one in place so you want to make sure you take that middle one out of the slot there because that's where your Decklink Duo 2 card is going to go. So we've got that loosened up. That's out. You can kind of see here, the Decklink's gonna slot right into this empty space. And there's also a slot right here on the board for it to plug into. Time to open up Decklink Duo 2. This is inside of a uh, one of these like electrostatic protective baggies. Typically, I would recommend to make sure that you're grounded. If you really want to go all out, you can get an electrostatic bracelet uh, or just make sure that you touch something metal that's grounded to get any static electricity out of you uh, before you get started on this. Probably wasn't the best move to wear a fleece shirt, but we're going to risk it. Touch metal just in case. All right, so we're going to open this up. Here is our Decklink Duo 2 card. You'll notice that it has five SDI connectors. That's because four of them are going to be SDI outputs. One of them is reference for timecode. On this side of the chip, there's kind of these golden connectors there. That's what's going to plug into the open slot on your board. So it might be a little hard to do this on camera, but what we're gonna do is take those golden connectors and face them into the direction of the board. I have my enclosure and then the SDI connectors are going to face down because they're going to go through this slot at the very end. So I'm gonna kind of tilt this and adjust this in to position. Now, very important here, you'll notice there's two sets of golden connectors with like kind of this little notch in between. Make sure that that notch lines up with the notch that's built into the receptacle here. Otherwise, you're going to break the card before you lock it in place. So now that I have it lined up, I'm gonna double check here. We're going to push down gently and you'll feel it kind of snaps into place, into position. And uh, it shouldn't need too much pressure if you line it up properly. And then you'll notice uh, that there is an open slot for that screw to lock it in place. So. Once this is in, I'm gonna take my screw. We'll lock this back in. It certainly helps if you have a, a magnetic screwdriver. It makes life so much easier. Just wiggle our card just a little bit to make sure that it's locked in there. And our screw is locked down in place. So you'll have your SDI connectors coming out the back just like this, and your screw will be holding that in place. So that's really all you have to do on getting this chip installed into the enclosure. And then of course we have to get the enclosure itself back on. So I've got this piece, piece here. I've got my the front of it facing this way again. And we're just going to slide this gently back in. We're not gonna force anything. This is very hard to do without being on a level table. There we go. So you can see our enclosure is on, and then we've got to lock in those four feet with those screws on the bottom again. So I will get started with doing that. And then once you do that, you are all set to use your enclosure. In our case, we'll be using it with Zoom ISO so that we can get up to four SDI outputs of Zoom virtual guest presenters and speakers. And with Zoom ISO, you can also output any screen shares that might happen. So you can save yourself the trouble of having to install a whole bunch of computers into your lineup when it comes to live streaming with the ATEM if you're trying to get virtual presenters in. This one device is going to handle those four outputs from here on out. 
So if you like this video, if this made life just a little bit easier for you, go ahead and make sure you hit that like and subscribe button below to let me know that you wanna see more stuff just like this. And in another video, we're going to show you a demo of how you can use this particular device for outputting up to four SDI outputs from Zoom ISO using just this one unit. If you liked watching this tutorial and you're interested in using a box like this with Zoom ISO, I've got another video heading your way to show you exactly how that works too. I'll link to it below so you can watch.